This meeting is being recorded. Namaste, everybody. The Bodhi Bros are back. I'm Phoenix Ray. I'm John with a J. And today we have another video review for you. Can't stop. And just to let you know what we do, you know, we review these videos. We tell you what we like, what we don't like. We keep it real. A lot of the times uh, we'll go into a topic on the video and maybe we'll expound a little further than what the video does. We'll add in our own experiences and such. So today we have by Michael Sanger, author of The Untethered Soul, Finding Fulfillment at Work. Hmm, something that could apply to all of us, I think. Absolutely. So what do you think, John? I'm still thinking because I, still thinking. Just, I just watched it. I hadn't had a chance <laughs> all week to get to it, uh, even though it's only like 12 minutes long, you know. Yeah. Life. So uh, I was like, you know what? No notes this time. Do something a little different. Mix it up. Watch it right before. So at 3.29, I finished <laughs> the recording. And at 3.30, we were logging into Zoom. So I'm going to take a few minutes still to marinate on a theme and process. And um, yeah, why, why don't, why don't right. you take well, us away? I'll, yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll go. Um, I like the video. Uh, I think it applied very well. Um, you know, we big thing that he talked about is making your work. There's no separation between work, being at your job and being spiritual that your whole life is spiritual. It's not like you're just spiritual when you're at home or maybe when you're doing yoga and then you go to work and it's, it's something separate. It's all one thing. And it gives you the mindset of how to approach work. And instead of saying what's in it for me, always trying to get something out of it. It's being in a place of service. How can I serve? And whatever that brings up in you is your stuff that to let go of. Whatever judgments you have, all that, ugh, that you know, you run up, you know, you run up against stuff or something kind of triggers something at work. That's your that's that's your stuff that you work on. That's your stuff that you work on letting go. Because I mean, let's face it. I mean, you know, everything is relationship. Everything is relationship. And your job is you have a, you have a relationship with your job, and even at your job you come across many different kinds of personalities. So they're always going to spark different things in you. They're always going to trigger different stuff that you have, traumas, um, desires you have, fears, stuff you want. So you're going to always be getting all that stuff's going to be coming up through those relationships at work. Mm. And, and it's sort of making that work into your spiritual practice. Right. And, and it, it, it makes sense. You know, the, the the more and more I'm thinking of it now, 10 minutes later, um, it, it's like the waves are coming in now of clarity, right? Like a lot of us utilize work or our jobs or careers uh, as a distraction, you know, to get it, to get yeah. away from ourselves, to unplug and to plug into something else so we don't have to deal with our stuff. But really, we are secretively dragging it behind us and everything, every challenge that that is presented to us is a reflection, a projection, a mirror of things like Ray just said internally that we've denied, disowned, suppressed, haven't addressed, whatever, right? And and they're popping up at work and you're at work and just like, no, damn, boom, boom. Whereas maybe what it sounds like with this video and, and where this discussion is going to lead is by embracing that every facet of your life, especially work, is part of your spiritual practice and everything is sacred. Every person, every moment, every message, every sign, every second is sacred. Well, shit, man, we spend a lot of time at work. So maybe by changing the lens upon which we view work and, you know, the way we tighten our laces as we take our steps into work, we can make it a much more enjoyable, peaceful, and uh, fruitful experience, even if the job you feel just sucks the life out of you. Maybe it's time to do that. And he does go on to say that even sweeping is spiritual yeah. if you allow it to be, because right. and then he puts his, his spin on it and you, we can all put our own spins on it is that you are providing a cleanliness, a new cleanliness for the floor to someone to walk upon and enjoy in a more brighter and better way because it's safer, it's cleaner, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, it, it really comes down to your mindset. Uh, so I was actually this this video kind of came in a little handy uh, this, this couple days ago at work. Hmm. So I got to work and 
the head honcho, the head manager comes up to me. He's like, Ray, he's like, can you do me a favor? He's like, I need you to get a, a wrench and I need you to tighten all the bolts <laughs> in the shelvings. We have like steel shelving. He's like, I need you to go around and tighten all the bolts. In this deep uh, voice, right? Like, Ray. I don't know. <laughs> no, but I don't know why I'm just doing it. <laughs> but he's like, and I'm thinking like, oh, to myself, like, what's well, kind of weird? Like, why do you be asking me to do this? I have something like maintenance should be doing. But you know right. what? Though? He's he's the boss, so right. I mean, can't. Right. You know, so I said, okay, yeah, and I took it. And normally I would be mad. I'd be questioning things. I'd be like, this isn't my job. You know, why should I be doing this? Right. You know, obviously he's in all that conspiracy, that paranoia would have come up in my mind, and I would be like thinking, like, you know, oh, is this is this how it's going to be now? I'm because like, few years ago when we had a, we had different management in, in our building and I was sort of taking advantage of, I was made to do jobs that were really or outside of my, my job, you know, what I was right. supposed to be doing. And so I felt kind of, and that kind of gave me a little bit of trauma and it gave me a little bit of a flashback to that. So I started like, but I was like, no, you know what, I'm going to go around. I'm not going to, I kind of let go of those, those thoughts. And I saw it as I was serving. I saw like, I started tightening a lot of those, a lot of the bolts that were holding the shelf together were really loose. So I was tight and I'm thinking, man, this is really good that I'm doing this. This is an act of service because, you know, what if I don't think it anything would cause anything to crash down. But, you don't know, eventually down the road, maybe it would have given weight a little bit or not as last. The shells wouldn't have lasted as long or, be, you know, with it being loose or or what if somebody from corporate came and they did some sort of inspection and saw, you know, that these were loose and maybe we'd lose points on, a, on an audit or a walk of some sorts. So I just took it as an act of service and I was really getting in there and I was tightening my, it was, it took a few hours to do this. It wasn't wow. just like walk by and I mean, some of them were, you were really loose and you had to kind of get in there and really tighten them and everything. So it took a, it took a few hours to do this. And I just didn't, I just, I just did the job. There was no, there was no me involved in it that was judging the experience as right or wrong or good or bad. I was just, I'm going to, I'm just going to do it and I'm just going to, I just use it as an act of service. And I thought I thought back of this video and I did it that way. Right. Um, now I, I do, I do kind of think that maybe it was <laughs> a little bit of a punishment. I didn't know though, but I don't, I don't care because I realized I, um, when I went to punch in, I said I was punching at the wrong time on the computer and I make my schedule and I make my schedule like a month out. So, right. and I went, so I just figured, well, maybe they keyed in my time wrong. And that's why it was wrong. And because it said I was supposed to come in like a couple hours before. I was like, well, whatever. They probably keyed it in wrong. Turns out I was supposed to be at, in at like 530 in the morning for something like post inventory audit. <laughs> I had no idea. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I just came in my normal time. But you could kind of argue both ways because, I mean, it was on the board. My, probably my name was on the board. I just never looked because I've never done that before. I've never right. done a post. But at the same time, though, probably someone should have like came to me like, hey, we changed your schedule. Sure. Because I think that. But so I think that was his way of like, OK, you didn't. He probably knows I didn't do it on purpose. Right. So he kind of gave me like, probably a task to do to like make up for that. I, I'm guessing. I don't know if it's in my head or not, but maybe, right. maybe not. I don't know. But True. either way, True. I didn't. The old me would have been like paranoid, would have been nervous, would have been like, True. oh, my God, you know, make would make a, a, a big deal out of it. And so I didn't. Did while you were doing it, did at any time, like either during or after, did it occur to you how maybe this task that really has seemingly nothing connected to your your job description, right? How you might be able to utilize this new perspective or or where you're working. I'm sorry, you kind of. You, you, I'm sorry, you froze up. Okay. What your question? So was. what what I'm saying is is either during or after this task, right? Even though it has nothing to do with what you normally do, right? Did it maybe give you a different perspective for your job or were you by either by, by way of where you were tightening things? Cause I know a little bit about what you do and how, you know, you walk around the floor and, and what your responsibilities are. Did by this totally taking you out of a pocket and inserting you into another, you know, just angle or element of the equation, could it, or did it help you in any way with your, with your normal responsibilities? I guess is what I'm trying to ask. Uh, no, I really wasn't like thinking of anything about other than this the task that was at hand. Okay. So I didn't really. I just I just approached it as, hey, this is neat from a place of service, right. and that 
this is when he, as is what I was told to do. And I'm like, man, this is good because it really needed to get done. Right. Because I was, those things needed to get tightened. And so I just, I looked at it, that approach like, wow, it, I made it, I made it rewarding that, wow, right. I'm doing this to help the store out. I'm doing this to, you know, make it better. And, and even if it was or wasn't for a punishment sake, right? It doesn't matter because you, yeah, you matter. ascended, was... you ascended a, a, above and beyond that because if that was that person's intention, so be it. That's their thing. You never right. took it as such. And, you know, and, and and who knows if that rubbed him, her, they, them um, in the wrong way or not the wrong way but in a way that was like look at this fucker like skipping around the store here like enjoying himself like yeah. oh I, I, i'll get him <laughs> like <laughs> like i i don't know that's i think that's kind of funny i worked for many 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 restaurants over the years and some really awesome companies concepts both large and small and one of them was the hard rock cafe and one of their like their signature um mottos monikers missions their statements that they're that they were known for was love all serve all and when i worked there for two years and there were two very quick years and i left only because it went by so quickly i could see myself being there for 20 years and going whoa where did 20 years go it was that badass of a place um but it, it never really dawned upon me like how profound and how awesome that phrase was until years and years and years later but like love all serve all if i only allowed that to penetrate me you know at, at the time and, and really just adopt that that might have made my whole experience even more fun and rewarding and 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 because it's it was still a server job and and I don't want to say nobody loves serving, but not many people really enjoy it or can find ways to enjoy it. But hard rock was enjoyable. And if you think about love all, serve all, that goes back to the spirit, you know, the spirituality of everything conversation, right? If yeah. if if that's my if my job is to love all, serve all, and that's what I'm coming to do every day, that's pretty badass. A for anyone and everyone that I encounter, and B for myself, because that's such a wonderful lesson to carry everywhere I go and plug that into every aspect of my day, right? Love all and serve all, I really feel can carry you on its shoulders of, of joy and inspiring fulfillment, grace, fill in the blanks with many and more words. And if I'm loving all, that's every moment, that's every person, it's every responsibility, that's everything that's presented to me, I receive and I'm open to understanding as a gift. And in turn, I'm processing that and serving all of those people, equations, missing spaces, happenings that happen with everything that I have. Man, that's a common sense equation for, I think, success and, and, and just goodness, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's very simple, but very profound at the same time. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So I like he also says in the video, um, he says that work is probably going to be your biggest spiritual, um, could be your biggest spiritual practice, and that using meditation can be something that we center ourselves. So it's always kind of coming back to our center because we're always going to run into things that we don't like people that are gonna rub us the wrong way nothing's ever going to go against the, the way we always want it to be and so we had to be prepared for that and instead of trying to make it the world the external world everything that we want it to be to make us be at peace work us create that peace inside of us so we're not just so always um, at the mercy of our external environment making us good mm. so the more centered we become and centering ourselves and taking it, taking a perspective. Um, you know, he says that you know, he, he views himself um, often a couple times a day that, you know, I'm just sitting on top of the earth, a rock floating in space, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to get nervous about making a phone call or dealing, making this, this meeting or this arrangement that it's not really that big of a deal <laughs> right. that we make it, we make it out in our head and that he would rather just, be fine within and not always try to control everything outside of himself to make himself stay at peace, not be triggered. And, no and that's a good, I mean, that's, that's the spiritual way of doing it because 
there's a lot of people that do that, that, you know, you get those people who always are a victim at work, always changing jobs, just like they do relationships. They think, well, the next relationship is going to be better than this one. Right. And then it's always going to run up against the same. It's just a repeating pattern that keeps happening because they're not working on themselves. They're always trying to find something else outside of themselves that's going to create that peace that they're desiring. And that the desire for the peace isn't wrong. It's not, you know, we all want that, but just going about it the wrong way, you have to have that, you have to be centered. You have to find, go work on that stuff that triggers you within or else you're just always going to be at the mercy of everything else around you. Right. And not to take things so personally knowing that yeah. none of this is you right it's all those, those things that you said trigger you come at you and and instead of turning to judgment like what is this doing now you know like why is she, he in my business like uh every time i come to, instead taking that breath center maybe a moment of meditation and going this is not about me this is about them love all serve all what is he she them are they going through right now for where they feel they have to treat me in this manner that they're approaching me with this demeanor that they're tasking me with this task and you know and taking that time to listen to step even closer into uh, not, of course not if this person is abusing you mentally verbally physically whatever right. but and there's clearly a, a, a line there and we have our boundaries and we should definitely honor those and erect them and et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, in those work situations where it, it just doesn't feel right, you know, he says there's 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 a reason why it doesn't feel right to you, right? And part of your spiritual practice is to explore what that's bringing up for you, right? And you don't have to necessarily do that in that moment while that, that heated exchange or that uncomfortable situation yeah. is unfolding, but, you know, bookmark it. And in that moment, try to love all this person or these people or whatever is, is in front of you and then find a way to serve it because a lot of times, and, and this is a diffusion um, tactic as well. You know, you, you want to quench, uh, quench the fires or the flames of something or something coming at you, sprinkle some loving awareness on it. Right. I did it <laughs> once an episode folks. Um, and so, and, and a lot of times that'll just make someone's shoulders fall and be like, oh, they're listening or, oh, they're not coming back at me or, oh, 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 oh. And the next thing you know, you're celebrating together, high five and your best friends, maybe, but it's it's right. worth a shot. And even if, you know, you, you serve without expectation or without, you know, expectation, really just, just serve, just serve. And the bonus is, is you get paid at the end of the day for it. <laughs> right i mean right so it's like you're getting like, you're getting video. you're getting paid to <laughs> to work on yourself <laughs> right and this was this Essentially. while i was watching it, i was like this makes me want to go back to work right like not i'm constantly working i'm constantly doing things whether it's entrepreneurial or I have a part-time gig right now um, but it's very very part-time but it also had me going, I want to go work another shift. And I, I usually don't find myself saying that. But with this concept in mind and heart, it almost felt like a challenge, you know, and 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 one that seemed like it would be fun and fulfilling. Like, let me go. And, and I usually I'll sit in the parking lot for a few moments and set my intention. So I like that he talked about that, you know, before you, you know, you step into work, you know, get yourself ready. I, I always do that. And my intentions are always different every day. Sometimes it's like today I'm going to meet someone, you know, new or someone that's going to teach me something or today I'm going to attract, you know, nothing but, you know, uh, people that, that, that want to have, uh, and, and that's by doing that though, I think you're, you're setting an expectation too, um, that see, that's, that's another careful tightrope that you have to walk. Yes. You can put energy into you know presenting yourself into a shift and 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 hoping for the best and all that stuff but maybe maybe it, it's an even another level of of growth and expansion by allowing it to be whatever it needs to be to serve you the community and everyone around you for the greater good and, and betterment just by saying i'm here to serve and then yeah. whatever's thrown at you 
do you find a way to love all of it and serve all of it? Well, even to go back into a couple of other videos that we did, uh, Dane here is maybe just ask the question, what else is possible? What else is possible today? Or what can I do to create an environment where someone new can enter my life today? All right. And being in that question, instead of saying, okay, today I attract, I'm, I'm going to set my intention to attract this, which could be, I mean, but if you're asking the question, rephrasing that, reframing that to the question, that feels more expansive and you're, you're allowing that to kind of come in. Right. And how no. can I, how can I be of service today to people? Right. And not that I have, God, I have to go to work today, but I get to go be of service today. And that can translate to one of a zillion things. And what's the word I'm looking for? Limitless avenues of potential of ripples turning into waves, turning into tsunamis of, of, of change or what, because really it only takes one person during the course of any day for you to have some type of exchange with that can really turn the world upside down. It could be, it could be a kid, you know, it could be someone that's 90 years old. It doesn't matter. And, and there's no way you could possibly put a tag, a, a, um, a, a judgment slip on it a, a, of any kind and, and stamp it and go, this is what it is, or this is what it could be. I mean, you can, but I think you'd be really mistaken by doing that and just allowing each and every person every interaction to be sacred because the the exchange there can turn into something for that person that spills into three or four other people. It spills into 400 to 4,000 or 4 million other people. Maybe you inspire someone to write a song, write a book, uh, make a phone call. It, it doesn't matter what it is. It's just a matter that you're doing it without anything attached to it, except for the pure joy and the understanding that you're here to serve. Right. You're and not, you get paid. Yeah. And you're getting paid. <laughs> you know, you're not coming with any other kind of agenda. You're not trying to get something out of it to it's not, it's not, there's no personal stuff. You're just like, I, I need to be validated. I need this. I need that. You're just going there just to serve and just to make, like you said, that was beautiful. What you said, just make that impact. Oh, thanks, man. And I think, you know, in, in regard to your personal um, story uh, that just happened recently, our jobs are just a place we go. It's a space where the possibilities are endless. Like it doesn't have to be, I do the same job every day. I do the same. I mean, it, it can be if that's the blinders that you have on for it, but like you didn't fight back and maybe someone in, in their situation has a little different um, <clears throat> relationship with their superior um, governing agency body person whatever right boss right <laughs> and they're like man i ain't doing that i ain't tightening down shit you tighten down man. fine you know get get carl over there to tighten down the shit but you you there was no fight back there for you You're like all right i'll tighten it right and i mean yeah like, and, it created... and i even i even came in though i even came in the office afterwards and i told him i was done i was like man you know there was a lot of those really like really really loose like I made it sound like I was like I was glad I did it because it needed to be done, and he shook his head. He looked at me. He's like, "I was like, good, good. You know, yeah, that's why. That's why I had you do it." And maybe there was another reason. I don't know. I mean, it was kind of weird that he used me, but whatever, whatever reason that is, that's on him. That's not. A, it has nothing to right, do with right, me. Right. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you found you found a way to put it through a new filter and create joy with it. You know. Yeah. And and, and now you have another skill. Um, added to your, your resume at your present place of employment that, you know, like, Hey, Ray did a really good job, but you know, I tighten a bolt. <laughs> uh, well, you know, we're joking about, but, but you did a project, you did it, you took care of it. You did it well. Maybe you're tasked with something else now. Maybe they're also like, you know, maybe he's feeling it. there's, there's a million maybes, right? I'd love to use that phrase. There's, there's the, there's the, the sea of a million maybes. And in this instance, maybe he was, he was just testing Ray's flexibility. Let's see how, how, how open Ray is to new responsibility. Maybe that maybe he's grooming you for a new position. Maybe not. It doesn't matter, but it's that sea of a million maybes. And you met that current, that unfamiliar wave coming at you with grace, openness, and, flexibility to just go with the flow. 
ease and joy. So how, how, how do folks out there that loathe their jobs, like that, that really just feel, and, and I don't mean you're, you're in a toxic place, an abusive place, because if you are, get out of there. And there's no going in there spiritually and trying to fight the demon, like get out. Throw, right. Go do your spiritual work. That, is one, that is one thing about the video that I kind of wish he would have said something about right. that. Right. But I get why he didn't, because if you give the ego any kind of little, if you give the ego an inch, it will take a yard. It'll look for any justification. And, he, you know, he says, if there's a problem at work, it's basically your problem because it's coming up against the stuff that you have. Right. And if you if you didn't have that stuff, you're you, you probably would be fine. Now, there's always, like you said, someone's being abusive at work, someone being manipulative. And maybe part of your expansion is that you go somewhere that you could serve in a greater capacity or in a different way. Right. Um, so I, I kind of wish it. But but if you give them that you that reason, then it could be. You may look for any kind of excuse and be like, oh, and, bl and blame and be like, oh, see, you know, it is that person's fault for you know, giving me that crappy shift and blah, 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 where instead of just changing your mindset and being not taking, not taking everything personal. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing, you know, is not taking it personal, centering yourself, keep coming back to your center. And in a way, life becomes a meditation. Every day is a meditation because how many things knock you off your center, how many things pull you and things are always pushing you and pulling you and, and you get kind of, you become, um, reactive instead of responsive and you right. just you know, lash out you know you're unconscious in your reactions and stuff like that so always having a practice of centering yourself i believe is very important i think that's the best way to start at least if you're totally lost in this and you hate your job and everything's kind of coming down on you is just to do a little bit of meditation each day just you know maybe just focus on the breath and just keep coming back to the breath maybe just five minutes a day in your spare time, we all have five minutes sometime. And it doesn't really matter. You don't have to go somewhere very calm and peaceful. You can go with the TV on. It doesn't matter because in the real world, there's always going to be distractions. There's always going to be noises, right? So if you always meditate when it's always completely peaceful and silent, it, it may not always be practical. Yeah. So you kind of sit somewhere and you, you watch your mind. And you're always going to, you're always going to get pulled. Your mind's always going to pull you something like that. The key isn't just to stop thinking or to always be perfect. There's no goal in meditation. It's just, I guess the goal is really just to keep, just to realize your loss in, in thought and then to come back. The realizing your lost is in coming back is the meditation. Yeah. And, and that, that kind of goes hand in hand with the book that he wrote. Cause you, as you know, I recently read it and he, you know, he always talks about, the those those voices and those thoughts that you are the light behind it all you are the observer listening to all that like so but maybe that's all you need to do in in a moment at work or wherever you are um that that you want to bring this into your practice into your present and and to get yourself more present by doing this practice a little poetry <laughs> um is is just saying to yourself okay I am the, closing your eyes, taking a breath and going, I am the light that sits behind and beyond all of these thoughts and um, these feelings right now. And then just be a silent observer and watching them, you know, float into the ethers because because there you, you're eternal, you're there, right? And there's all this stuff. And maybe that just gives you the clarity that you need to take another breath and, and move in to and beyond um, to what's next ahead of you. And hopefully that is, the reminder of how can I be of service? And that doesn't mean that you're, you know, you're the subservient, you know, peon that, that the boss takes advantage of or whatever, because when it comes to leadership, the people that I think that are the greatest leaders of, of our world are the ones that are perpetually of service to themselves too, because they take really good care of themselves and are able to take exceptional care of their team, their family, and others. And they lead by example in a way that is ultimately of service, right? And, yeah. you know, and if you're working for someone that has, you know, this charisma about them or whatever, you're not 
no, no matter what you say yes to, no matter what you step into lovingly with passion, focus, and power, it's service, right? It doesn't mean it's for him or her or they or them. It's for everyone and everything around you and they or them, he or her, right? It's it's service, period, period, period. It's like ne ne it keeps going. No one can stop that because once it's in motion, like like I said, you you had that exchange with that one child or one 90-year-old person during the day. You don't know. You have no idea. No one can quantify where that goes and, and what it creates as a result of you loving all of that person and all of that moment and being of service. Damn, I love this. This was a good, <laughs> like, I when I watched the video, I was like, meh. But I also thought, I don't know, man, you and Ray are going to talk about some cool shit. And that's, folks, that's one of the reasons why we do these reviews. It's so that we can learn or um, be entertained or get gentle reminders from some teachers that we've liked from the past. Or in, in this case, it's, it's, it's still a very new one to me. I mean, I read his book, but I've never seen a video of him. Um, mm. And then we can we use it as a diving board to just go, here we go. Sometimes it turns into review. I like this. I didn't like this. I, but, but a lot of times, as Ray said earlier, it's a discussion about how this stuff has, has surfaced in our lives or how maybe moving forward, um, we might apply some of this wisdom. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And I, I like the part where you said service includes yourself. And I think that's where we sometimes we get lost and people who are very uh, service oriented people pleasers, you know, they're always helping other people doing what's right for that for others, but they don't, they don't take care of themselves. And so it's very, very important that you include yourself in all that, in, in that service as well. And, you know, your health and your mental well-being and all that good stuff. Yeah. And it's what, like right now we have about five minutes left. Right now, my part-time position uh, beyond the entrepreneurial things that I'm endeavoring to do, right? So working for a, another company, working for other people, right? With, I should say, right? I am a server. <laughs> that's my that's my title, right? And I never thought I'd go back and do it again because after every restaurant job, most of us are like, well, that was it. I'll never do that again. But there there is something about coming back to it. And last time I, I did this, I was like, oh, that's it. I'll never do this again. But a few years had passed and I'm like, I'm different now, right? And even today, especially after this video and our conversation, I feel like the next time I return to that arena, I'll be different dare I say better, uh, suited to be of better service to others and myself um, by just adopting a new way of doing things. And, and maybe I'll find more enjoyment. Maybe I'll be able to be more valuable to my team and, and to all those that I get to encounter. Um, and one of the reasons why I feel like I returned to it is because I did so much and nothing was fulfilling me. And I was like, John, the actual terminology here is server go be of service man like and 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 treat you know treat every table treat every guest every time every day like like a it's your last like b maybe it's their last and if either side may be true why wouldn't you want to make it as special entertaining and connective as possible like make eye contact and do, this isn't just my job, folks. This is your mm -hmm. jobs and, and being out in the world. Make eye contact, be present, treat every customer, every coworker, every person, sentient being, tree, car, note that p passes across your desk as sacred. I promise you it'll change your life. Yeah, and be aware of whatever arises within you any kind of resistance that you have and that is your practice that's what you work on yes it's not that it's not that difficult really i would <laughs> it drop, is, it is. i would drop this mic for us if i could right, right after what you just said like like we just we both like it hit a home run there it's like dry it's it's a very expensive <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not dropping the mic just imagine me dropping this and breaking my foot folks it's very heavy <laughs> um but yes like thank you for 
for adding on because that is is a very very important piece of the puzzle and, and you were saying i ran over you i'm sorry we have two minutes left though that it's easier said than done right is that what yeah. you said yeah yeah and 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 with our last two minutes why 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 is it easier said than done because when we actually get into the environment and things arise, <laughs> we don't want to. We, we, we feel we feel the things we don't want to feel, and <laughs> right. we want to stick to our comfort zone. And yeah, you know, we talk to this person, but we don't talk to them. Or it's so we avoid true. this, and it's yeah. just all that, all that stuff, all that that right. keeps us keeps us closed off. So it means sometimes it's challenging yourself to step out of the step out of the norm, so you have your comfort zone. Um, and not to run from those things that arise in you and not to bottle them up and to face those things because nothing changes unless it's, unless it's faced, unless it's looked at and given awareness to. Yes. Lead with love, folks. Leave fear behind and shine that light of love into every corner, crevice, person, being, thing, uh, place, and um, watch, watch the world dramatically change uh, for you and everyone around you. I'm John with a J. Phoenix, Ray. And from our hearts to yours, get out there, get under the sun, get under the trees, shoot, get under the one you love, and we'll see you soon. Thank you for your support. We are the Bodie Bros. Yeah. <laughs> and sing.